Hello and welcome to another edition of Spotlight on Method. I'm your host, Michael Marks. I'm standing here at Channel 3 Community Access located at Method High School. Anyone interested in producing their own show, come on down. You know, I have two great guests on tonight. I have Gary Roberts from the Method Arts Council, he's the chair, and Jim Silva, who's a community activist and also the founder of SMARTO, South Method Residents Together. You know, we got together a while back and created a small working group of citizens interested in forming an act an arts collaborative in Method, a committee to explore the creation of an arts center in Method. The committee includes leadership of some of Method's largest art organizations, including Cache, the Method Arts Council, and Method Arts Center in Corp, better known as Mackey. Among the locations being reviewed is the building formerly known as the Hegner Center, located at 15 Maple Park Ave next to Gillis Park which was reacquired by the city of Method back in 2016. So sit back, grab your popcorn, and enjoy the show. excited to have my two guests on tonight who are representing the Arts Collaborative Method, which is a, a new collaboration uh, of a group of concerned citizens who are interested in the arts in the community and that uh, would like to see uh, an arts center come to fruition in our community. Uh, my two guests, one is Gary Roberts. He is the chair of the Method Arts Council and has been so for the past five years. And I also have Jim Silva here, who is a community organizer and someone that's been very active uh, in the South Method neighborhood with the creation of SMARTO, uh, which is South Method uh, Residents Together. So I'd like to thank my, both my guests, Mr. Good Silva. Thanks, Mike. Mr. Roberts. Um, let's start off with uh, just telling us a little about uh, your involvement in the arts community and um, anything else you'd like to share with us regarding your community involvement. Great, thanks. So um, I'm the chair of the Medford Arts Council. Um, this is a group that's been around since 1980. We're the city's cultural council. So um, our primary function is to serve as grant makers for the community. We receive money from the state and the city. Uh, this year we granted out uh, $53,000 to uh, 52 projects um, for Medford's kids, seniors, teens. Um, some of our grantees uh, that we tend to um, award uh, funds to are the Medford Public Library, um, Cache, which is one of the members of the Arts Collaborative, um, uh, some of our schools, uh, other community groups, Medford Historical Society, et cetera. Um, you can learn more about the Medford Arts Council on our website. Uh, you can find it easily online at medfordartscouncil.org. Uh, we also have a great uh, Facebook uh, page and uh, Twitter account, and we've just started an Instagram account as well. So That's people awesome. can follow what we're doing there. That's all. It seems like you're very active and involved in, uh, yep. in, in the arts, and that, that's great to hear. I uh, just can't resist uh, saying that we were the uh, two... 2016 Cultural Council of the Year for the state of Massachusetts. Oh, congratulations. In recognition oh, for all of our community work. Yeah. Um, so, and um, right now we are actually conducting a community input survey online so people can access that survey uh, through our homepage of our website. Um, every year we like to reach out and find out what people's ideas are, what the needs are, so that we can be responsive in our work. 
That's excellent. That's excellent. And Jim, tell us a little about uh, what you've been doing in the community. Absolutely. Well, uh, started South Memphis Residents Together organization about 12 years ago. What we do is we advocate for people's needs in the community. We work for public safety issues from crime to resident parking to traffic mitigation, bus stop moves. We look at uh, what the needs are for, from traffic light signaling to uh, crime trash, all of this uh, infrastructure issues, and we work with the city, with the city council, as well as the administration to sort of work these problems out. And it really has built a community of people. Uh, we're in, again, we're in sort of a connected environment, but there's a lot of disconnect. So this really gives people an opportunity to voice their opinion, to work together, to advocate for each other, and, and build a community. Right. Well, I, I know firsthand, uh, being involved in uh, some of those initiatives, that uh, you have been very successful with SMATO in uh, bringing and confronting some of the issues that face your particular neighborhood. And to be quite frank, I'd like to see that done citywide because I, I think it's been a great initiative and very successful Absolutely. in getting some uh, needs within the community addressed that some, sometimes otherwise would be overlooked. Um, so I appreciate your effort. I know also, we won't get into it a lot, the Green Line extension has been, yes. uh, you're on the committee now, and maybe if you can just give a minute or two about uh, where we stand with the Green Line extension. Absolutely. And I'm on the working group. I'm the Ball Square representative from Medford. And what we're doing currently is we're in a construction phase, clearing phase. We're actually uh, the liaison between the GLX project team and the community. We uh, advocate for their needs. We ensure that they're updated from construction to pest control to any kind of issue that may impact their homes. We're working with the city. We're working with the Green Line. We're making sure that people are following through and that everybody's notified effectively. That's great. We all know transportation is key. It's the reason why people move to communities. Absolutely. And um, I'm thankful for your effort on that. I know it's all volunteer, both uh, volunteer positions. And on behalf of the community, I want to thank you because I know a lot of time and effort goes into it. And it's all behind the scenes. It's not like being a member of the council when you have FaceTime all the time. People say, oh, look what he's doing. Right. These are volunteers that are behind the scenes, actually the backbone of the community. So I, I want to thank you both. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, which I mentioned at the beginning, uh, this new arts collaborative method, which uh, I believe was initiated uh, for the fact that uh, we're looking to create an arts center, a home for the arts in the community, which I believe, and I know you both do, is long overdue. So maybe if you can both give me uh, a quick rundown of how was this created, why was it created, the who, what, when, where, why of uh, where we're at now with uh, the creation of an art center in the community. Maybe we could start off. Great. So uh, the Medford Arts Council uh, is joined by uh, Jim and Smarto. Um, uh, CACHE in Medford. Uh, CACHE stands for the Coalition for Arts, Culture, and a Healthy Economy. Um, they're the organization, the nonprofit, that sponsors the Circle of the Square series in the summer. Um, the Arts Across Medford um, uh, uh, Month of Arts in October. Uh, the Mystic River celebration typically happens in September, um, and lots of other important things. Our primary um, uh, cultural calendar in Medford is um, operated out of the Cache website, so if people are ever uh, looking to find out uh, where they can check out something interesting to do, uh, I really encourage them to, to look at the, uh, the Cache website, uh, which they can also link uh, to from the um, Medford Arts Council website. Um, Another organization represented in the Arts Collaborative uh, Working Group is uh, the Medford Arts Center Incorporated, which is uh, known uh, by its abbreviation, its acronym MACI. Um, and so we have the president of that group involved, the president of CACHE involved, chair of the Medford Arts Council involved, um, and um, a couple of community artists as well. That's excellent. And uh, maybe if you could just outline uh, what the need is in the community for an art center, why would a community seek out space uh, for arts, and uh, how does arts impact the community? Great. 
So um, the Medford Arts Council, we can't do our work without knowing what people want and need. Um, uh, that's one of our primary uh, functions, is, is to collect information, to do outreach, to be out in the community. We go to uh, community events, citywide events. Uh, we're represented. We're uh, conducting surveys, as I mentioned earlier. And I would say uh, one of the um, uh, constant themes in my work uh, is the need for an arts center. Um, uh, you were actually a member of uh, a participant in a, a summit that we had in the council chamber in the fall of 2015. There were over 80 people uh, from, it was an open uh, public event. Uh, 80 people uh, uh, showed up representing 40, more than 40 different community groups. Um, and um, uh, one of the dominant themes of that uh, event was um, the need for a home for the arts. Um, in the work that I do, when uh, I collect um, you know, the uh, Medford Arts Council email. Uh, and uh, the dominant question I get is, where can I go to show my work? Where can I go to see the work of Medford artists? Where can I um, find workspace to create um, my, my things to uh, rehearse? Um, where can I go to take classes? So um, uh, right now, there is no answer for that in Medford. So, um, Jim, if you could just tell us a, a little bit of how you got involved and what you envision uh, in an art center. Uh, what, what do you Absolutely. think an art center would be like? Well, I got involved because I'm a community organizer and I'm really interested in building a community or building community. Right. This is such a great opportunity to uh, bring people together. Right. And again, there's a need for this. In other communities and surrounding communities, there everyone has this interest in developing this particular resource. It's appealing. It's a place where people want to go to. It's a where it's a place where you bring people together, and that to me is that is building a community, and that's part of the right. makeup of a good community. Right. So, so the the general uh, idea is for arts, but it's also a place where you can meet neighbors, make friends, and, and do a lot of things, not just the arts. So it's really a, a collaboration of uh, not just arts, but uh, drawing a community together. Right. And, I, and again, it's keeping it here. It's keeping it local. We don't have to travel elsewhere. We can be part of this, this process. The scene can be developed here with people that we know or become friends with. So it's really a, it's, it's going to be a center. It's going to be a center of the community where people can come and learn and, and express themselves. And that's really important. Right. So, so I don't want to date myself, but uh, back some years ago, uh, when the issue came up, when there were a number of artists that were looking for space in the community, at that time they said, let's uh, look for an art center in the community. And at the time, we were uh, moving from our old neighborhood schools to the centralized schools. And uh, one of the buildings that were no longer being used as a school, the Swan School, was um, targeted as an art center. And uh, there was a collaboration back at the time between some of the art groups and also uh, local community access. Uh, that happened to fall down and never came to fruition. But uh, I think uh, what's happening now is uh, there's a renewed interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I heard uh, that uh, there were several sites in the community that have been looked at uh, where we can have uh, not only administrative offices, which I'm sure, Gary, you would appreciate, uh, having a place to hang your hat and call the Method Arts Council, but also a place that can have workshops and trainings and, and, and performances and art exhibits. And I, I know one site that uh, really piqued uh, the interest of this new arts collaborative method was the uh, Hegna Center, which uh, is right next to Gillis Park, if anyone's familiar. And uh, that, uh, for many years, uh, was not in city control. The city deeded out the building some time back uh, for a purpose of uh, helping people with uh, developmentally disabled uh, people in the community and outside the community. And uh, it was just recently, within the last two years, that the city retained uh, the building back. And uh, I think it was a great opportunity uh, on its location, its parking uh, availability, and overall space that I believe would make a great, great uh, area for uh, an art center. And uh, I know uh, we've done a tour in the building, uh, and I would like to hear 
what you perceive uh, we can do in the building and uh, how we can include that building as uh, a piece of the neighborhood. Great. So um, uh, what I've seen of the building, the floor plan in our conversations in the Arts Collaborative Working Group meetings, um, I, I believe that there's a lot of potential for a very flexible, multi-purpose uh, space that can accommodate a range of different um, services, provide uh, different kinds of spaces for people to meet, for people to uh, be artists, to people, for people to be audiences, um, for people to, to do their work. Um, you know, let's not forget, uh, most artists are, are small businesses in, unto themselves. Correct, correct. Um, and so, um, you know, we believe that this facility uh, has a real potential to accommodate um, uh, all of the, not just the artists, but the community needs that we've identified so far. That's great. And Jim? And the, the brilliant part of this is back in the day when Swan School was looked at, there really wasn't a lot of communities that had art centers. We have the benefit of working with some of our neighbors and seeing how they, what purpose they had, how they were able to get and inspire people to come on board to, to develop this particular property. So that's what we're looking at as well. We have this resource that maybe we didn't have 15 years ago. So I'm very excited about that possibility and, and we're doing a little bit of discovery within our group to see if we can guide the city, if we can suggest what other, other communities had done to develop their own art center. Has there been any formal outreach by any of the groups uh, regarding surveys or uh, information or feedback from the community uh, in regards to what the community would like to see if we did implement an art center? I mentioned earlier that um, the Medford Arts Council is currently conducting an online survey, um, which can be uh, accessed through our website. Um, that's, this is a free uh, anonymous survey. And um, we're asking about a range of community needs. Again, you know, our grant making, uh, we're looking to collect this kind of information so that we can be responsive to, to um, those kinds of suggestions. Um, we've this year decided to include a couple of questions concerning uh, an art center in general. So it's not uh, specifically uh, focused on the Hegner facility right. itself. Um, We've, we're going to be running this online survey through the end of April, uh, and we're still very much interested in collecting as much information from Medford citizens and um, the surrounding communities uh, as we can. Um, right now, I would say I, I looked uh, in advance of uh, today's uh, show um, at our current uh, results, and 65% um, of the people um, have uh, indicated, who have, who've uh, completed the survey, have indicated that they are in favor of Medford ha having its own art center. Wow. Um, and then another 32% um, um, are interested in that. Um, so um, it's a very significant uh, trend um, that I expect would continue. Um, I think that's a very positive sign of, of the community interest and, and desire for this. Uh, we've also been asking for the kinds of activities that people would like to see in an art center regardless of whether it's this particular facility or, or any, um, and uh, started to categorize that. Um, we've talked about many of them already. Uh, people are really interested in being able to take classes um, on their own, um, to have their children be able to take classes there, to uh, take classes with their children, um, to attend performances, to rent studio space, to uh, see exhibits there, to hear lectures, watch movies. So um, we believe that an art center um, uh, in the way that they're designed these days really could accommodate a wide range of, of cultural activities. Right. And, and just to get to the point where, uh, you know, there may be people that say, you know what, that's great to have an art center, but I'm homebound and I can't get out there. Uh, are there any ideas that you know of uh, that uh, do community outreach and uh, bring the arts out to the community, maybe in local parks or uh, somewhere that may be more reachable to people that may not be able to get to a site? Well, well the potential is there. I mean, again, this is, this is being developed as we, as we proceed. It, it, it's the input from the community. It's the value of what people see and what we can do with that value. So nothing is is in stone right. so anything's available again that's why we need to have folks input we need to for them to be supportive we need to have their ideas and we can just develop this as we go along i'd like to um, also um, let people know that um, 
uh, the activities of the participating organizations so far um, really are trying to um, get uh, cultural arts and culture and humanities out broadly into Medford, every neighborhood for every population um, segment. So uh, I, over the last two years, the Medford Arts Council has granted over $8,000 to uh, the Medford Arts Center Inc. Oh, wow. to Mackey for their for Marv. Uh, this is the um, repurposed um, school bus that um, you uh, may have seen already. I've you seen certainly it around you this. certainly will see more of it. Uh, Marv stands for Medford Arts Resource Vehicle, um, and we believe that that's just an amazing asset and a tremendous idea. We're really um, investing a lot of seed money in that project, uh, and I, I just think it's going to be a fabulous uh, citywide resource. Um, I can't also uh, neglect to mention uh, the amazing work of Cache in these um, uh, activities, these uh, public, free public events in the summer in particular, in the early fall, uh, primarily in, in Medford Square. Um, and, uh, you know, th 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 those are events that uh, we also in, uh, um, fund uh, every year um, that uh, attract and serve thousands of, of community uh, members. So um, the last thing I would say is uh, an initiative of the Medford Arts Council um, begun um, a couple of years ago um, is to um, bring more public art throughout the city. So um, very soon we hope to announce the launch of a, of a small fundraising campaign to bring a work of public art to McDonald Park. Oh, um, we're very interested in uh, finding out opportunities to bring more murals around the city. Um, so we think there's tremendous potential to make it a, a more interesting, uh, beautiful um, uh, set of spaces um, that where we can all live, work, and play. Right. I, I mean, I've even noticed on the electrical boxes throughout the community, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, art displays in the electrical boxes, which I think adds so much to a community. Uh, I know back uh, last year and the year before, uh, Mackie was doing, they call art bombs, yeah. which they put yarn around electrical yeah. Uh, lights and so forth, and just the addition. It, it makes it look like, you know, uh, someone's there, someone cares. Um, and I know I had the uh, chance to uh, go to Lowell uh, back a few years back, and, and I think it's something that you talked about, Gary, about how uh, they took a park that was in a drug-infested area and built a small performance stage and uh, really took back the park from which was considered a downtrodden park and uh, residents didn't want to use it, they were fearful, and created with wrought iron and, and a small wooden stage at a minimal cost. Uh, and I said, you know what? Uh, we, we don't have those type of parks, thank God, but that are drug infested. But uh, it would be nice to use some of the open space we have to invite people right in the neighborhood uh, to get involved with the arts and at a minimal cost. And I really would like to see that concept someday implemented. And I know you probably both would like to see the same. Absolutely. We're definitely interested in um, making uh, uh, more of our open spaces uh, venues for arts and cultural activities. Um, you know, the city of Medford uh, is really blessed with our, our parks and playgrounds and the greenways sur surrounding the Mystic River. It's a, it's a distinctive asset that Medford has that surrounding communities don't have as much of or as um, high quality spaces. So, um, you know, uh, you mentioned the example of Lowell. I think there are, are several communities around uh, the state um, that are trying to um, open up the recreational spaces that traditionally have just been set aside for um, athletics right. and incorporate more uh, types of arts and uh, cultural activities alongside them. Um, you know, murals alongside uh, the fencing um, uh, areas where you can have performances um, in uh, open spaces. Uh, people want that. It's an attractor. Um, it, it it's just fosters community, um, physical activity, um, has tremendous uh, social and, and personal uh, well-being benefits. It's great. It, it really is amazing because it does bring people out and you get to know your neighbors and you get to know your community and you, you, you start to feel part of a process and you get people involved. If they're involved with art, they're involved with other issues. Right. And that's significant. It, it's That's the brilliance about Medford. It's such a blank slate. It can be anything we build it to be. It's just getting people involved and excited about the possibility. And art does that. So the uh, next question naturally would be, 
uh, we have a need for an art center in the community. Uh, we have several locations that we're looking at. And I guess the big question is, how would we fund an art center? What's the next steps? Uh, do we go through studies, feasibility studies? Um, uh, Jim, I know you're an organizer in the community. I know that you were one of the members on the uh, creation of the dog park behind the McGlynn School on River Bend. And uh, you were one of the people that led the drive to go out and find uh, private funding uh, through the Stanton Foundation that paid for uh, a good majority, if not all, of the dog park. And um, uh, what do you see your experience in that and going forward with the Art Center? How are we going to move this forward? Naturally, funds are tight in the community, Absolutely. and there's a lot going on. We have a lot of projects, as you're probably both aware. Um, so how do we make this happen, and what are the next steps? So I think what we're looking at is uh, within our organization that we have set up, we have people who are actually looking at how other art centers were funded. We're seeing what resources are available. We're seeing how we could change from districting to uh, private entities. What will provide this seed money? The other thing we're trying to do is we're bringing it out to the community, make people aware that there is a possibility. And that in itself helps because people are, are interested, they want to be involved, and they they are somewhat philanthropic in that respect. Sometimes when you have these situations, when things are developed, somebody hears about it and has that information and can come forward, guide you through the process as well. I think a lot of uh, folks who are in city government are excited about having a center like this because it really does put Medford in a different context. It's It becomes a, a more vibrant place to be. It attracts folks. So all of these things together, it's, it's really about communicating and it's really about keeping people informed. And again, having people give, have some input into the process. So, The members of Arts Collaborative Medford uh, had been um, reaching out to professionals who do feasibility studies, who who have uh, helped communities um, uh, create and fund their own uh, art centers. Uh, and so we're learning um, what the uh, components of, of a proposal um, uh, should be. Um, the Arts Council, the Medford Arts Council, is prepared to um, apply some of its uh, discretionary funding towards covering the costs of those kinds of services. Um, we would like to make a case to the city uh, in the coming weeks um, uh, so that we can uh, have a sense of whether this is this particular facility is one um, that we should look further into. Um, and uh, in the meanwhile, um, we're um, creating a new website, uh, acmedford.org. Mm -hmm. um, it's a work in progress. Um, we have a, an FAQ um, that we're going to be posting um, this weekend. And um, Jim, do you want to say a little bit more about how people can um, give us uh, information that way? Absolutely. Uh, once It's currently up. It's under construction, but there is a link into an info mailbox. So if anyone has any questions or suggestions or want to be part of our process of email list, et cetera, we plan to, we're doing an update as we go along. We'll have some, once, once we have the full Monty, we'll be able to provide people with information, but people should at least sign up for information at this point. So at acmedford.org, you'll be able to hit an info and be part of a mail list. That's great. I, you know, I, I can't say enough. Uh, I want to thank you both for your involvement in the community. Um, and uh, really, I, I think this is a worthy initiative. And I appreciate your volunteerism in moving this com community forward that we all love and care for. And I, I think this is uh, going to be a great asset uh, when it does come to reality. And again, I want to thank you both. Thank you for putting it out. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your support. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Thanks for your time. Method has a large and dynamic arts community with numerous individual artists and more than 25 arts and culture organizations. The Method Arts Council funds more than 60 cultural programs throughout the city each year. And Cache's online arts and culture calendar featured over 600 events in Method in 2017. And yet, the arts currently have no physical home in Method. There is also a lack of space in the city for holding arts-related events and displaying the work of our artists and organizations rely on temporary and borrowed spaces. An art center could serve as a hub for the arts in Method and provide much needed space for art classes, art exhibits, performances, 
art studios, and administrative space for art organizations. Arts and culture are important to building a strong community. Not only do the arts contribute to the attractiveness and livability of a city, they contribute directly to the strength of the local economy by supporting both our artists and our local businesses. In addition, arts education enhances student performances across all disciplines, helping to build motor skills, language, problem solving, and critical thinking skills in students. For more information, please visit www.acmethod.org. I want to thank my two guests tonight. Um, I want to thank Gary Roberts, the chair of Method Arts Council, and I want to thank Jim Silva, who is uh, a local organizer and also the creator of SMARTO, South Method Residents Together. I want to thank them for all their civic-minded uh, involvement in the community, and uh, I want to thank you, the viewing audience, for tuning in once again for Spotlight on Method. I thank you for your viewership, and we'll see you at next show on Spotlight Method.